Hi guys, this is Samantha from the Interactive Tutor. By the time you finish this tutorial, you will be able to use most of the Photoshop tools, understand how layers work, as well as understand masks effects. In this tutorial, we're going to be teaching you tools and techniques, and to do that, we're going to be creating a magazine cover. However, you can use the same tools and techniques to create just about anything, from flyers, business cards, to your own photo montage. So let's get to it. If you've never used Photoshop before, you can learn everything from the beginning and finalize with an intermediate level. And if you're an intermediate user, you can still learn some tips to start working more professionally. This will be the final project, and all you'll need to complete it is these two pictures that I've provided in the video description for you to download. And obviously, you will need to have Photoshop installed. For this project, I'll be using the new Photoshop CS6. You can download Photoshop CS6 beta version for free and try it out for 60 days from the link that I've provided in the video description. However, if you don't have the CS6 version yet, you can do it with Photoshop CS5 also. In this project, we'll be replacing the original background for the one on the second picture, and then we'll add the text and some color effects to make it look like a magazine cover. This course is divided into four chapters, but before we start working on the project itself, I want to introduce you to the Photoshop interface and give you some important information about how Photoshop works. If you already have a good understanding about how the layers work in Photoshop and know how to apply the tools on the layers, you can go straight to the second chapter where I will be explaining about common types of image files and how to save Photoshop documents in these different formats. And if you already know how to save documents in Photoshop and know about different formats, you can go straight to the third chapter where I'll be starting the cover magazine. If you're new at Photoshop, I strongly recommend you to watch this first and second chapter Otherwise, you will learn how to make a magazine cover, but won't be able to use the same techniques on your own in the future. So let's get to it. Once you have your Photoshop opened, the first thing I want to show you, and this is an exclusive feature in Photoshop CS6 only, is that you can change the color of the interface if you don't like the new black style. I personally don't like it, so I'm going to be working with the classic color, but this is up to you. To change the color, just go to Edit, Preferences, and Interface, and from here you can pick any color you prefer. Now let's go ahead and create a new document. Go to File, New, and we'll call it Introduction. Just keep in mind, you won't need to keep this document for the future. Make sure the format is in pixels, and the size will be 400 by 600. The rest, centimeters, inches, etc., are meant for printing only, but for this introduction, since we are only going to be working on the screen, it's better to work in pixels. The resolution should be 72 and the color mode RGB, red, green, blue. The rest of the format colors are meant for printing, but red, green, blue are the colors that will display on the screen. Then hit OK and the document has been created. Now the second thing you want to make sure is that you have the same interface as me. So make sure that here it is in Essentials and click on Reset Essentials. OK, now you have the same windows and panels as me. Now this white area where we are going to be working is called Canvas. This long vertical bar on the left are the tools. Most of the tools have this little triangle or arrow on the right corner. This means that they contain other different but similar tools inside. To access them, just hold or right click on them and now you can select the tool you want. And now, I want you to pay attention to this other horizontal bar on the top. This bar tells us the properties of each tool. If you change the tool from the tools bar, this other bar on the top will change as well showing the properties of the tool that we have currently selected. Now, the most important thing about Photoshop is understanding the layers. The layers are represented in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. If you can't see them, just click on the Layers tab and they will appear. When you create a new document in Photoshop, by default it will come up with one layer called Background. You can think of the layers as if they were transparent papers. You can work with as many layers as you want, from 1 to 1,000, whatever. So to create a new layer, go to this little icon next to the trash and click on it. It will create a new layer called Layer 1. If you click again, it will create a new layer called Layer 2. And let's click again to create one more layer, called Layer 3. As I said before, each one of these layers is a piece of paper. Even if you can only see one paper, which is the canvas, it is not only one, it is actually four. One on top of the other one. In Photoshop, the paper on the top is the layer on the top, in this case called layer 3, the paper under or behind is the next layer, in this case layer 2, and so on. The background layer is a white paper, and the other three are transparent papers. That's why they are represented with checkered squares. Anything checkered in Photoshop means that it's transparent. The reason why we are viewing the canvas white is because the background is white and the rest of the layers over it are transparent. 
but if we painted any of the layers that are over the background with other colors, then we would see the canvas this other color because the layer of that color would be covering the white layer. Let's go ahead and try. So select the layer number one from the layers panel like this, and now go to the square to choose a blue color, for example, like so. Hit OK, and now select the Paint Bucket tool and click on the canvas. Now let's paint the layer on the top of the blue with a red color. To do so, you have to first select the layer you want to modify from the Layers panel, and now pick a red color from the Colors panel like this, and click on the canvas. Now obviously you see it red because the layer on the top is red and covers the rest of the layers below, and the only layer on the top of the red layer is transparent, and that's why it doesn't affect the way to view the other layer under it. Now if we want to see the blue layer on the top of the red layer, all we have to do is drag it over from the Layers panel, and this is how you change the order of the layers. Let's use some tools to learn a bit more about layers. Remember that Photoshop works with layers, not with objects. So before using any tool, you need to know in which one of the layers you want to apply the tool and have the layer selected from the Layers panel. In this case, we are going to draw a square on the transparent layer, which is the layer 3, so go ahead and select the layer 3, and now let's choose a green color. Now grab the Rectangle Selection tool. Remember you can extend this panel by right-clicking if you need it. Now go to the canvas and drag it to draw a rectangle. Before you let go of the mouse button, press and hold the shift key on your keyboard to get a perfect square. Make it around this size, it doesn't really matter. And now grab the paint bucket tool. Bring it to the square and click on it to paint it. Now go back to the selection tool and click anywhere to get the square unselected. Now go to the move tool and move the square around. This is how you move it. Keep in mind that you're not only moving the square, you're actually moving the entire layer where the square is, but it seems that only the square is moving because the rest of the layer is transparent. To understand this better, let's move the blue layer. To do so, you have to first select the blue layer from the layers panel, remember? And now go to the canvas, hold anywhere and drag it. As you can see, you're moving the entire blue layer. And now you can see part of the layer under, which is the red layer. Now, if you want to move the green square, if you go and click on it and drag, You'll see that the square doesn't move, but only the blue rectangle is moving. This is because the blue rectangle is the layer we have selected. So again, to move the green square, you have to select its layer, and now you can move it. This can be really annoying when you're working with many layers, and you have to keep selecting and switching between them from the Layers panel, and that's why Photoshop has a shortcut for everything. In this case, to switch between layers without having to click every time in the Layers panel, just hold the control key on your keyboard and click on the object you want to move or select on the canvas, and this will switch to the layer on the layers panel automatically as you can see. If you can't see these squares on the corner of the square, it's because this option is not checked. Just check it to see the transform controls. And now you can transform the square like so. Pull from one of the corners to make it to a rectangle, or remember that holding the shift key, you can keep the proportions of anything you're transforming then hit enter for the transformation to be applied. Now to undo the last thing you did, hold control and hit Z on your keyboard. If you need to undo more than one step, you can go to edit and step backward, or you can use the shortcut control alt Z, and you can do it at any time, as many times as you need. Now say that you want to make a circle, but you forget to create a new layer for it. This may seem stupid to say, but it's actually a very common mistake that even pros make. That's why Photoshop gives you the option to lock the layers to avoid it. Let's see how to do it. Say that you have the green layer selected and you grab the circle selection tool and make a circle and paint it green. The circle has been created in the same layer with the square because that was the selected layer at the time we made the circle. And now, if you want to move the circle, you can't move it because Photoshop doesn't understand about objects, only about layers. So it will move the entire layer, including the square. Now to fix this mess, you would have to undo all the steps to remove the circle and then create a new layer and make the circle again. If you don't want this to happen, you can avoid it by locking the layers. If you're sure you don't want to modify a specific layer or layers, you can lock them to make sure you won't mess with them. To do so, select the layer you want to lock from the Layers panel and click on the locker icon. And now, every time you try to modify the layer by mistake, Photoshop will send you a pop-up message saying the layer is locked so you won't mess with it. As you can see, that's what happens. Okay, now the last thing about the layers. Really short before we go to the second chapter. I want to show you this eye icon next to each layer. If the eye is there, it means that the layer is visible. If you click on the eye, it will disappear. So will the layer on your canvas. 
You will make the layer invisible, but it won't modify anything on the document. It just changes the way to view it, and you can check it or uncheck it, making it visible or unvisible anytime you need. This is very useful for trying and seeing how things look when you're designing. To delete a layer, just select the layer you want to delete from the Layers panel, and click on the trash icon to throw it in the bin. So that's basically it for the layer's introduction. Now go to File and Save As, or just use the shortcut Control shift s and save your document on your desktop to continue in the next chapter. Thanks, and we'll see you soon.